the Moxie Capital of the World, Frank Hill Promotions, in association with Harris, now he presents the special 10 round heavyweight match. Go ahead and take a look at the tail of the tape. You'll notice right off the bat, Tubbs 10 years older. But the key thing here for Tubbs, at 234, he's coming in about 11 pounds lighter than his last couple of fights. The New Jersey rules are in effect. We'll have a 10-point must system. The three knockdown rule and the standing eight are in effect. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And the ringside physician can and may stop the bite. And there's Joe Cortez, who is our referee here today. And there is the bell. This is scheduled for 10 rounds, and Riddick Bowe leads it off with a good solid jab. Yeah, that was a wake-up call for Tony Tubbs. I mean, we thought that Tubbs, would, who has the superior hand speed... Oh, a would big be, right hand. I think that might have been... I'm not sure, Dan. I think that might have been... It hit a lot of gloves. Yeah, it hit a lot of gloves. Some of it hit the air, though. So far, Tony Tubbs is not doing uh, anything of what we expected in terms of trying to establish his jab. He wants, he, that being Tony Tubbs in the black trunks, wants to make this fight a test of skill. Riddick Bowe in the white trunks wants to make it a test of power. He has a big edge in that department. And I think really the key is, Dan, who is in condition to impose the nature of the fight, to dictate the pace. Left hand to the body by Riddick Bowe, down by the belt. Both fighters sitting in tight. We got it in. Inside uppercut by Riddick Bowe. Oh, another. Oh, and another. You can see that last uppercut landing flush on the chin. And Tony Tubbs is up against the ropes. And hurt. Tony Tubbs is throwing nothing back. Remember Riddick Bowe had uh, Terrell Biggs hurt early in his fight and could not finish him. Did catch up with him later in the fight. He actually had Biggs hurt much quicker than this. He hurt Biggs about 10 seconds into the fight. We're here in round one. And already a tough experience for Tony Tuck. But as you watch the learning of, of Riddick Bowe, right now he's making a mistake. He's letting Tony Tuck lay inside with him when he's got him hurt. He's got an advantage. He should be getting Bring distance with the jab and throwing hard punches. Get those hands out. You can hear Joe Cortez, the referee, telling the fighters to work their way out. He's the referee that doesn't come in and break up every time the fighters are in close. Oh, and another good left, and then another, another right by Riddick Bowe. And the surprising thing here, Dan, is, is that Riddick really is, is right up there in terms of hand speed with Tony Tubbs. Tony seems to have lost some of his speed, and, and Riddick is uh, is matching him. Bo's camp was actually, Alex, worried when Tubbs came in in what they thought was better shape than they anticipated. But it has been all Riddick Bo. Well, you can see Tubbs had to spin all the way around after a wild right. You saw Tony score his best punch of the fight of left hook, but although Tony might land some, some punches that look like they should do some damage, he is not a power puncher at all. He doesn't plan himself, he backs off, he's got his weight back. He doesn't commit enough to a punch to, to hurt anybody. The final seconds here of the first round. Remember, we're scheduled for 10. A solid beginning for Riddick Bowe. Here's the beginning of the second round, and if it wasn't a bad enough round for Tony Tubbs, he actually took a strong right hand from Riddick Bowe in the last second of the first round. Remember, uh, Tony Tubbs has only been stopped once in his career, that by Mike Tyson after uh, Tony got off to a good start of their fight in Tokyo. Uh, Mike caught him with a left hook uh, late in the second round, and Tony's cornerman jumped in immediately and stopped the fight. Riddick Bowe right now content to stand in the middle of the ring and let Tubbs circle around. 
Pretty Clow yesterday telling us that he was going to be the aggressor, that he did not want Tubbs to get set, that he wanted him to constantly be fighting off balance. Paul Tubbs, what a, a slickster. Tony Tubbs came in this uh, in the ring bone dry when the belt for round one started. He is right now pouring sweat. That first round got his attention. A very cautious round so far by Riddick Bowe. These two men have sparred at the gym, uh, Dan, and I think they both know that the, they like to counterpunch, and I think that's why they're both waiting so hard. There is Riddick's wife, Judy, who is ringside. I believe some of Riddick's children are here in attendance as well. A very affable young man, Riddick Bowe. You always get worried, Dan, to have two guys who have been sparring partners. You always worry when uh, Riddick Bowe's people take a guy that they sparred with. Uh, you think, well, they know they know that this guy represents no threat. The strange thing about this fight is, is that, according to people who have no uh, alignment with either camp, Tony Tubbs gave Riddick Bowe all he wanted in those sparring sessions out in Las Vegas. And uh, the people, when they heard, the people who saw those sparring sessions, when they heard that uh, Tony Tubbs would be the opponent, were amazed. Well, wouldn't you agree that Bose Camp also assumed that Tubbs would show up for this fight somewhere around 250 pounds in the high 240s? That's right, but you know what Riddick said was, Tony may think that I'm going to be the same fighter I was in the gym. I'm going to be much better on the day of the fight. I think Terrell Biggs made sure of that. This is not the same fighter that Tony Tubbs sparred with. Oh, oh, oh. 20 seconds left here in the second round. There you saw uh, Riddick uh, have trouble lining up Tony Tubbs. Uh, Tony moving a little bit laterally each way, and Riddick missed three straight punches. Somewhat of a cautious round here for Riddick Bowe. End of the second. Looking good. You can't start wearing them down to the body. Just sail down. You got those. Okay? You Tony Tubbs in the black trunks, Riddick Bow on the left of your screen wearing the white trunks with the red trim. So far this fight, as expected, belongs to Riddick Bow. Tony Tubbs in trouble in the first round, though, came back and Riddick Bowe, Alex, surprisingly, really didn't press the issue much in the second round. Oh, that was surprising. The other thing that's, that's made this fight boring so far is the fact that because Tony got hurt so quick in round one, so far he's been fighting just to kind of survive and not to win. And he's getting eaten up on the inside by Riddick Bowe. Yeah, the uppercut of Riddick Bowe. He landed three solid ones in the first round, and again, we saw one land. The interesting thing about Riddick Bowe, Dan, is, as you saw just in that exchange, although he's got long arms, a big man, very physically gifted, ooh, best combination of fight by Tony Tug. Exactly right. You would want Riddick, and Eddie Futch does, want him to fight at distance. You need to jab to keep his man on the outside. But he is very effective on the inside and getting better all the time. There is Tony Tubbs' wife, Ingrid. She's certainly interested here at ringside. Tony Tubbs makes his home in Pacific Palisades, California. Just flew in here to Atlantic City yesterday morning. Good look at that cab of Riddick Bowes coming right at you. We are in the third round, a little over halfway gone. This fight scheduled for 10. And Tony Tubbs beginning to look, Alex, like a fighter with a little more confidence. Oh! He seems to be getting into a little bit more. Riddick Bowe. Upset that he ate so many of Terrell Biggs' jabs back in early March. Allowed to move his head more that he spent the last seven weeks working on slipping that jab. 
You see notice any difference? Well, I think uh, he's doing a little bit better, but there, yeah, good, good strong jab, jab by Riddick Bowe. I think, you know, the key has been so far the fact that he hurt Tony early and really knocked him right out of his plan. All right. So that Tony hasn't been firing as many jabs. I know one thing, there is clearly an audible difference between the punches of Riddick Poe and Tony Tuck. Poe's punches just echoing through the building here. This fight is scheduled for 10 as we come to the end of the third. The fighters move to the middle of the ring here to get round four started. I'm Dan Deardorff here in Atlantic City along with Alex Wallow. Glad you're with us here on ABC's Wide World of Sports. You saw that combination, Dan, that uh, Tony Tubbs scored in, in the last round. You wonder, uh, you know, why does he try to do that more often? Why does he just pick so much and be, uh, you know, essentially a negative fighter? And the answer is I think he just doesn't have enough confidence in his conditioning to think that he can put punches together and throw hard punches consistently through a, a 10 round, a 12 round fight. Why a man with as much talent as Tony has wouldn't get himself in absolutely peak condition to try to go after the kind of millions of dollars that are available to heavyweights, even as contenders for the heavyweight championship, is one of the great mysteries. I doubt there's a man in America who weighs over 200 pounds that isn't aware of the kind of money that Evander Holyfield and George Foreman took to the bank. Yeah, and I saw you uh, working with the heavy bag on your front porch <laughs> in St. Louis. It's enough up, to make you think up, about it. <laughs> but George, uh, what, a minimum of 12 and a half million and, and Holyfield in excess of 20? And if the pay-per-view numbers are what they uh, are reported to be, uh, both fighters will make several million in excess of their guarantee. Something tells me that has not escaped uh, Riddick Bowe's attention or Rock Newman, his manager. Hey! Bring out, bring out, if, these, uh, if these two heavyweights don't uh, start putting some more punches together, I think we're going to have a lot of financial reports on pay-per-view <laughs> boxing. Again, a reminder, coming up later, Cortez steps in, separates the fighters. That jab is finding glove. Well, one of America's great fight fans is here in attendance today. There's Gene Hackman. And he is not there to be noticed or sign autographs. He's there because he's a tremendous fight fan. And, and you know that because he comes and watches the four-round yeah. prelims and, yeah. and stays through the walkout fights. Riddick Bowe talked of being the aggressor. He certainly is, but again, spending a lot of time in the middle of the ring, letting Tubbs circle to the outside. All right, bring up, bring up, bring up, bring up, let's go. Round four is coming to a close. Time. Doing a beautiful job. Doing a beautiful job. Let's keep the lateral movements working. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Not yet. Let's take them a little bit further. Okay? Huh? Okay. All right, check us out. Five one. Five one. Six one. Six one. Six one. And we're now in the fifth round from Harris in Atlantic City. That's Riddick Bowe on the left, Tony Tubbs on your right. Oh, and there's a good right hand from Riddick Bowe. Tony Tubbs was in real trouble in the first round. It was a typical start for Riddick Bowe, getting his opponent in trouble. But then, for some reason, Riddick Bowe really took it easy and allowed Tony Tubbs to regroup in the second round, and he appears to be unfazed. You know, you almost get the feeling watching Riddick that he's trying so hard to learn his lesson that he's a little bit mechanical right now. You can see him thinking uh, what Eddie Futch has put in him and what he's to do. 
but he's got to just get this stuff to become second nature so he reacts more and doesn't think quite as much. And that's just all part of the learning process. And if you're going to learn, it's hard to imagine having someone in your corner more knowledgeable than Eddie Fudge. And I guess a key factor there is what Riddy Quill thinks of Fudge. He refers to him as his Papa Smurf and, you know, obviously an extremely close relationship between the two. Speaking of close relationships, I want to pass along our congratulations to Jimmy Davis, uh, audio technician here at ABC who's retiring after 39 years with our company. Jimmy and his wife Imelda are going to move to upstate New York, a town called Edinburgh on the great second on the lake, Alex, and uh, we're going to miss Jimmy, a part of our Monday night booth, the 20 Indy 500. Good luck, Jimmy. Happy retirement. One of the great audio men and a lovable characters on the scene at ABC Sports. There, you saw Riddick trying it there, putting jab together, not single punches. He didn't, he wasn't effective with it there, double jab again. But on, on none of those double jabs did he follow up with a right hand. No, he didn't, but yep. he did learn one thing. When he puts jabs together, nothing comes back from Tony Tuck. Because Tony, you know, the, sir, there it is again. It's yes. tough to counter off a double jab. Come on, come on, come on. Look out, Riddick's just pushing oh, it, he's not snapping it, and he's not accurate with it. But, you know, you just like to see him trying oh, it. Sure. Come on, work out, watch your head. There, it's the sign of the hand speed of Tony Jones. And you can see the look on Bo's face that that caught him by surprise. Watch your head, watch your head, let's go. Time! Almost got it. Understand what I mean? Keep breaking down fast. Okay? Yeah. okay keep walking. This is the last round we're going to play with. Okay. Keep walking. This is the numbers 5165. That's 5165. All right, seconds out. Seconds out. Let's go. All right, let's move into the second half of this fight, the sixth round here from Harrah's Casino Hotel in Atlantic City. Dan Deardorff, Alex Wallow ringside. This is Tony Tubbs and Riddick Bow. Ooh, and Riddick Bow working low to the body, lands a couple of good shots. One of them borderline. And Tony Tubbs retaliated pretty effectively. I think Riddick Bowe would be well served to try to pick up the pace here. This kind of slow pace favors a guy who is not well conditioned, who is not, go, go. Come on, you know, great for the distance. Uh, uh, to use the uh, derby parlance, we're going to get it to very soon. And Alex, of course, referring to the fact that Riddick Bowe is 23 and Tony Tubbs is 33. And in uh, Riddick's corner between rounds, Eddie Futch, his 80-year-old trainer who... Been around longer than anybody who's active today and knows more and has more to teach. Really wanted Riddick to get into the range and to land some body shots. Good counter left there by Tony Tubbs. Sure was. So yeah. far, Riddick hasn't been able to do it. Let's go. But Alex. I guess you have to agree that, that Tony Tubbs and seven weeks ago Terrell Biggs are the type of opponent that Riddick Bow needs to face if he's to continue to grow. Yeah, he doesn't learn anything getting put in with guys who fall oh, down in the first punch, but at the same time, you know, as we said in the opening, Dan, these are valuable learning experiences, and hats off to Rick Newman and Eddie Fudge for taking guys who can fight. But, at the same time, these kind of opponents are exposing the things Riddick doesn't have right now. Uh, in terms of the ability to control the pace, to dictate the pace, to finish a guy when you got him hurt. Um, and as we said earlier also, he's a little bit mechanical. Oh, 
whether he will stay mechanical, as I said, is, is uh, will be determined down the road when he's had an opportunity to let all the things he's trying to digest hey, hey, wake up. become come on, wake natural up. to him. Wake up. Come on. Come on. Again, you saw Bo go to the uppercut. That one wasn't as clean as some of the ones he landed previously. Nor is he throwing him with the same kind of conviction. He should, he should be wasting punches on the inside. He should be maybe taking a step back, get a little bit of punching room, and, and throw hard punches. Come on, you guys are wrestling, both of you guys. Come on, let's go. Joe Cortez admonishing both fighters, accusing them of wrestling. Ready Cole closes out number six with a flurry. Okay now, baby. Pick it up on this now. Okay? Now don't don't lay in there on the on the rope. Yeah, doing nothing. Those are going to take the punch. Seconds out! Here we go in the seventh round. And Alex, Tony Tubbs, who's on the right in the black trunks. Ready Cole wearing the white. I, Tony Tubbs is still here, but I, I don't have him winning around yet. Well, I think you can make a case for him in a couple of rounds where, uh, you know, there were a lot of really meaningful blows. But you have to have Bo ahead comfortably. And you just don't see at this point whether Tony Tubbs has the kind of game plan to get him back into the fight. The right of the game plan, whether it is the conditioning to execute the game plan, has always been the key, and it's always been his downfall. And really, at age 33, the big edge he had, his hand speed, uh, bring up, bring up, you have to say that's diminished somewhat, too. It's not totally going. He's still got some quick hands, but not what they used to be. Bo feigning with a left came in then, and badly off balance sailed over the top of Tony Tuck. That was the case of a former outstanding amateur looking very amateurish. Oh, good left hand by Tubbs. And that time, Tony beat Riddick to the punch, and I believe he hurt him a little bit. Just stunned him momentarily. And if I didn't, I wasn't sure that. I'm now sure since Riddick made a face like he wasn't hurt. Tony does not follow up. Again, it looked like, though, that the reason Bo got hit like that is he was off balance again. He was a little top-heavy, leaning far too far. He was trying to throw a punch, and, and Tony uh, landed one before he did, and he was off balance. Come on, work out. Come on, work it 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 out. Come at least I hope he is. Everybody else is viewing him as such. A lot of balling, a lot of wrestling, but there were some clean punches landed in that exchange on the inside. Tough to score those kinds of exchanges. Watch the little bit of movement that Tony Tubbs gives. The problem with it is that he goes both ways. He moves both sides. And that's giving uh, Riddick some trouble uh, in terms of cutting the ring off to land his punches. There he's moving left, but see, he comes right back to the right, and Riddick's not able to get set. Well, if this fight does go the distance, three judges at ringside, Frank Caro, Gene Williams, and Richard Strain. We're scheduled for 10, this is the end of seven. Here we go for round number eight. We're in Atlantic City at Harris, Riddick Bowe, and Tony Tuff. And the fighting moves inside. Ooh, there's that uppercut again. Again, that uppercut by Riddick Bowe, and another right hand scores. Come 
That time when both fighters were in close, it was obvious to see the scoring punches landed by both. Eddie Fudge told Riddick in between rounds, you can win this fight on the jab. And, and I think he's right. I think he can win it that way. And the first obligation of a fighter is to win the fight. But in this case, I think Riddick Bull has a, an additional burden on him. The burden of being exciting, of being entertaining. He's doing the first thing, he's not doing the second. <clears throat> but if you had to pick one, yeah, I like his you would win. <laughs> but you're right. Look at George Foreman. Look at the money he made off of the entertainment factor. The one thing I must say I like about Riddick uh, in talking to him before this fight, Dan, was, you know, we all knew he had a great physical makeup, but, you know, as we said when he fought uh, Terrell Biggs, a lot of people questioned his mental makeup, his commitment. And he has been much serious, more serious, much more mature, uh, relaxed, uh, less to uh, clowning around, and uh, that really bodes well for his future down the road. But if you hear all the talk, which I think you're going to hear about Riddick as a possible immediate challenger for either Holyfield or Mike Tyson, uh, take it with a huge grain of salt because he is not ready. And I don't think you'll hear it coming from Riddick. Riddick is the last person to say, I want my shot now, I'm ready, I'm going to be the champion. He's, he's a patient man, and he's a child, Alex, he's only 23 years old. That's right, and I think Rock Newman, his manager, is smart enough about the public relations aspects of this business to know that it's, it's good PR to let your fighter's name be bandied about, but I think he also knows boxing enough to know that he's not ready. A fight that does so many million in 1991 will do even more in 92 or 93. Plus your fighters get a chance to win. Hey, we got you. We got you. Let's go. We're in the eighth round of a fight scheduled for ten. Or a better chance to win. I mean, you know, sometimes a fighter can, can wait ten years and never develop into the kind of man who can win a world championship. And I think the jury is still out on Riddick. It has been a very solid and comprehensive effort by Riddick Bowe. He should be well ahead on the cards, but there are two rounds to go. Five. And the dog. You understand what it means? It's, it's, uh, all he's doing is walking five and ain't throwing no punches. Okay? You done broke him down now. He tired as a dog. Okay? You hear me, Tony? Yeah. Okay. Right. Reach down deep down, down for me. Okay? Alright. And let's walk soon. Okay? Show me that big Tony Tug high. You understand what I'm talking about? Keep your hands high. You understand what I mean? Put a bow in your walk back. Through. Walk soon. Okay, you don't have nothing. You understand what I mean? Gotcha. Not All right, Let's move into round number nine. Tubbs and Bo, a ten round non title fight. Good left that time by Tony Tubbs. And here's the most action we've seen since the first round. Best exchange of the fight. Riddick opened the round with a good scoring right hand. Tony Tubbs took it, came back with a series of four and five scoring punches. Riddick took those and came back. Which might be the kind of the round at this stage in round nine where Tony Tubbs knows that he's got enough in his tank to last two more rounds and he's going to let it all hang out. He has to know he's behind. He just hasn't thrown enough punches to win. Well, there was a wild right by Tubbs. Air ball. What's a good six inches short? Air ball is a very good discussion. Alex, a crossover term, huh?
out of there. Let's go, Tony. Let's go. Work out of there. We have one round to go. Tony Tubbs and Riddick Bowe. Stay with us. This is the last round. Come on. Now, this is the last round. Thank it. Okay, come on, last round. Deep breath, baby. Deep Take deep breath. Show this junk stuff. Take it to the mountain top. Right, this is the 10th and final round. Right, 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 right. Joe Cortez tells the fighters to touch gloves, they do, and the final round is underway. Tony tubs the counter oh, punch, he goes back, out. lays down the ropes, and then rips a punch to the body. Well, Riddick Bowe really selling out on that right hand. Finds himself off balance, and Tubbs has done a good job all fight long of throwing in a decent counter punch every now and then. No, those, those kind of punches you see right there are like or amateur punches where you just want to put the white portion of the glove on the opponent. In the professional ranks, you, you have to make the punches count for something. And that a punch that appears to expend a lot more energy than damage it exacts from your opponent. Let's look at the negatives and the positives in this fight, man. For Riddick Bowe, this is the longest he has ever gone. He had an eight-round decision, all his other fights have been less. Uh, so he's into a tenth round. I think Riddick knew coming in that he would have to go the ten-round distance with Tony Tubbs. He's a durable opponent, smart veteran who knows how to survive and has. And it's possible that the kind of pacing that you've seen from Riddick is just a product of that fear of the distance, that unknown territory. In terms of you know, negatives, I just think Riddick has not shown yet uh, that he is the instinctive kind of fighter you have to be at world-class level. I agree. I agree. I, and I think back to what you said, he needs to think less and react more. But I don't think it's necessarily bad at this stage, you know, to fight this kind of a fight. While he's learning. One minute left here in the tenth and final round of this heavyweight fight. And Tony Tubbs is trying his darndest to knock him out. Because that, for sure, is his only chance of winning this fight. Oh, a good left hand right to the solar plexus by Tubbs. If you're trying to gauge the, uh, the opposition in determining this performance, remember one thing about Tony Tubbs. He's only lost two fights, both with the men who held the world championship, Mike Tyson and Tim Witherspoon. He is a difficult opponent, not easy to look good with. And I think Alex, a man who desperately wanted to show that he's just not washed up. Uh, you're right, Dan. You just wonder why he didn't take this opportunity to get himself in tip-top condition. There's the bell, that's the end of the fight.
Ladies and gentlemen, from Harris, Atlantic City, New Jersey, the scoring by points as follows. Judges Frank J. Cairo and Richard Strange each score 96-94, while Judge Jean Williams, she observed 97-93. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still undefeated, Well, he had the energy left for that, Lennox, the yeah. little leap in the air, and you understand his uh, excitement, too. He should be excited about that. He, well, uh, into unknown territory, he went the ten rounds against a difficult opponent who's lost only twice, as we heard, against Mike Tyson and Tim Witherspoon. He's done well there. He did do well, but I sensed that he was worried a bit. He, he didn't know what the, they were going to announce. You felt that uh, the fact that he was pacing himself the way he did, too, told us a story about him having to go 10 rounds where he'd previously never been. Yeah, he's been into uncharted charted waters and that was the first time and, you know, you always are a little wary of places you haven't been. So I think he was a bit wary and, what, and he what? was basically reserving some tanks. Furthest you've been is eight? Is eight rounds. Would, how would you feel, do you think, going through nine and ten in that situation and possibly beyond that to 12? I think I would feel good because mentally I would prepare myself for it and, you know, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward and going to the late rounds but obviously if I if I can end it as soon as possible, I will. Then that's the